so the only um, remaining thing at this level um, to talk about with the algebraic traces and teaching learning is um, how to extend it to other algorithms, and that's kind of an ongoing, continuing kind of area of research. But in this basic um, framework we have here before um, deep learning was introduced, um, if you want to use it for, say, AQ learning, you can imagine that it gets more complicated, right? Because with um, SARSA, we're on policy, right? And so we take an action, we follow that, we know what to update, we know what um, rewards to listen to, and it's all clear. Once you get to the um, domain of off policy um, algorithms, it's harder, right? Because um, you're gonna take some action and then your experience is gonna deviate from the actual uh, values that you're updating. So what's the way, the right way to do that, right? Um, if you're doing, so if you wanna come up with a Q Lambda algorithm, you have to keep in mind that um, the trajectory of actions you're taking to calculate this trace, to do the update, may not be the same as the actual actions you took, right? And so you don't wanna use any of the um, states and actions and rewards past the part where um, they actually match what you did because the way you got here um, may not be the way you, the states you updated at the time. Um, and so the way they, they handle that, so the, the, the primary algorithm that kind of is the core of this, and many people try to do improvements of it, and there are ones, but Watkins is kind of the, the core one that people keep referring back to, um, is the idea that you use the trace to zero out things, right? So when you take a, um, a non-greedy action, right? So remember in, in Q learning, sometimes you're gonna follow um, the sampling, the action um, straight from your own policy, right? So you're gonna take an, uh, an A um, and it's gonna be um, the maximizing, the best action that you could possibly get from your current state according to your value function, right? This is the off policy step. Um, in that case, you're gonna update your account because you actually visited um, this state and in the same way as, as we had before, right? Um, but if you're looking at a state, so for some other state, which isn't the one that you visited, um, isn't the one that you chose as your next action, um, because we're doing eligibility traces there, state action pairs, um, for the state and action pair, which is not um, equivalent to the one that you chose, um, you're gonna set it to zero because basically you you have not only not visited, but you chose um, not to take that action. So you don't want to um, connect the trajectories together. Um, and the uh, keeping them the same would be the, all the states that weren't even related at all. So basically, I guess, um, if you're in a particular state for the action you chose, you're gonna do the normal update but for all the other actions which you don't choose, which are the off policy actions, you zero them out. So it's as if you've never visited them. So this will cut off any kind of incorrect correlations um, into uh, the um, update. And so the algorithm's the same as we would expect um, Q learning to be based on SARSA, where we've got this um, Delta TD error. And I think Previously, I might have called that a backup because you you use um, the TD error to back up the value, uh, the value function. And I think, let me just check on the previous slides there. I wrote down backup besides that, yeah, which is wrong. It's good to keep track. Um, no, it's not good, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but to be uh, correct, uh, we refer to this as the TD error, right? Because this is the difference between that target and the prediction, right? Um, so really it's, it's the same thing here. That's our TD error. And then we use that to, to come up with the backup, um, to basically back up those values um, into the previous states according to these weights. 
and then um, for Watkins to get that those rules that we talked about, you basically do a matching on whether the action you took was the optimal one or not, according to your current value function, and that determines this. So that's only one way to do it. There's multiple other approaches, and this one actually has um, some disadvantages because at the, at the beginning, you can imagine where you're going around and trying actions that aren't very good, you're gonna zero out things a lot. Every time you cut off those eligibility traces to zero, you're essentially cutting off that state and saying, I've never been here before. So you're not even able to back up learning through it. Um, so the beginning, it might make learning kind of slow, but it is correct um, way to do it. So there's other um, implementations where people try to not have so much cutoffs, but um, use the maximization more efficiently. Um, when this original version of the book was made, I think they were talking about other versions that might be more um, uh, useful, but this kind of a long time ago. So um, they had some kind of uh, plots here trying to show the differences of how um, different uh, approaches might converge. That's not as important right now because the way they're being used today is quite different than that. But this idea of eligibility traces and um, TD learning can, can still be kind of very relevant. Um, if we look more today, to things this paper is a few years ago um, but they're trying to figure out how do you use um, eligibility traces when we're talking about deep learning but you um, reinforcement learning and, and q learning but in the presence of um, deep neural networks as our value function approximation so um, if you check on the website we also have um, some lectures on basic value function approximation um, to look at and um, the next topics we're going to get to after all of those are kind of absorbed is to basically jump into the deep learning um, age, which is to say, um, how do all these concepts, which are sa the same, change when um, some of the elements in the middle, essentially um, primarily the value function, the Q or the V function, is represented with a, a deep neural network? And what are the implications for changing um, reinforcement learning? Um, when, when those are, are the case. But um, we will try to also come back to how eligibility traces can be part of that. And it's an unresolved question. It's a thing that people have been looking into, um, but they often can improve um, the speed of learning regardless of the, of the substrate of your, your value function, because as you can um, imagine, it goes back to, I have to worry about those things, the idea that, um, we're still connecting these two ideas that we have sampling, right? Like the MC approach, and we have, you know, local, um, localized learning from, from, uh, from differences um, or, or surprise um, in our model. And um, sparse rewards, right? Um, helping deal with um, sparse rewards because um, the idea is that you might only get rewards um, near the end of your your experience or in certain parts along the way and you want to say well let's let's spread that reward backwards in time across the different ex um, actions we took in a decaying way to make sure that we learn as much as we squeeze as much learning as we can out of every piece of information we get every ward, and that's gonna apply regardless of the, the system using underneath. We'll get to that next. See you then.